Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be trying to figure out, is an SSD faster in gaming than an old-fashioned hard drive? Let's talk about that, but first... Hey, we're from today's sponsor. sponsor. As a creator, creating content is almost second nature. Once the idea hits my mind, I almost go into autopilot, doing scripting, recording, and editing until it's complete. However, getting it seen on the crowded space that is YouTube is a whole other challenge. With TubeBuddy though, you get access to a wide range of tools like tag optimizers and search ranking results to help you optimize your content to succeed on YouTube. Want to give it a shot? Click the link down below to learn more. All right, so this is our second testing video in the same day, so if we're in the same clothes, yeah. But uh, what we have going on right here is we're gonna be testing an SSD versus a hard drive in gaming. Right here, we have a system using the Computer Upgrade King Continuum case, special thanks to them. If you haven't seen this PC build or the video that we used to test the RAM in this, whether video comes out first, hit the eye on the top right corner to check that video out. But what we have in here right now is that pretty RGB SSD. That is an SSD from Team Group. It's one of their RGB SSDs, and it's gonna be our SSD for testing. And what we have here in this really shiny giant object that some of you might not even know what it is, this is a 320 gig Western digital hard drive at 7200 RPM, just a standard RPM. This is what pretty much any Western digital blue drive or Seagate or even Toshiba, Lenovo, any of those drives, that is what they will typically run at standard. The worst case scenario would be something like a 5400 RPM drive, but in this video, we're gonna test the most common drive right now that you should be having in your system to help you decide, could upgrading your hard drive to an SSD impact your gaming performance? So what we're going to be doing to get very controlled and very standard tests going is we have three games already picked out that have built-in benchmarks so that we'll be able to just press a button and then it'll go through the benchmarks, give us min, max, and average, and then we will know which one is victorious. So how about we go ahead and start testing the SSD and then eventually we'll touch the hard drive. Okay, so right now we are testing on the SSD. So this is going to be Windows 10 and the games are installed in the SSD. Of course, next will be the hard drive with Windows 10 and games installed on it. So the first game we're gonna be testing is Rainbow Six Siege, all ultra settings. We have MSI Afterburner pulled up here. We're gonna do a controlled test with the SSD and then we will do one with the hard drive. All right, so we got the test back. We're looking at a minimum of 83.1, an average of 224, and a maximum of 285.6 on the SSD. All right, guys, the next game we're gonna be testing on the SSD is Far Cry 5. Again, we're using the built-in benchmark tool and we're running on ultra settings. So keep that in mind. This is the SSD, ultra settings, and we're gonna go ahead and run the benchmark. All right guys, so as you can tell, the minimum FPS is 83, the average is 104, and the maximum is 126. Once again, this is being tested on the SSD. So let's go ahead and test one more game. All right, so the next game we're gonna be testing is Deus Ex Mankind Divided on Ultra Settings, again on the SSD. As you can tell, all Ultra Settings right here. We're gonna run in the built-in benchmark tool for this as well. You can just go into Extras, built-in mm. benchmark, and run it. <laughs> And we have hit our last test. So we managed to get an average of 74, a minimum of 58, and a maximum of 96.2. So let's go ahead and plop the hard drive in and see what we get. All right, guys, we are back. We have the hard drive installed running at 7200 RPM. We are now going to do the same exact settings, have MSI open up top, and we're gonna go ahead and benchmark I will definitely say one thing I've already noticed is it did take a lot longer just to load the benchmark. It's one thing that Matt and I pointed out at the beginning of this video 
As we said, you really probably won't notice a difference in FPS, but that's kind of what we're trying to figure out now. And the thing that you will notice though is longer load times when it comes to loading applications. And then things like downloading maps and games will take longer, downloading textures, stuff like that can of course take longer on a hard drive than it will on SSD. So in Rainbow Six on the hard drive, we got 77.2 minimum, 227.7 average, and 295.5 max. And the second to last test is going to be Far Cry 5 once again. We have all ultra settings enabled on 1080. Let's go ahead and test and benchmark. All right, in testing out Far Cry 5 on the hard drive, we have a minimum FPS of 82, an average FPS of 103, and a maximum of 124. All right, guys, we are now testing out the last game. We have Deus Ex pulled up on the hard drive. We have the same exact settings as before. Let's go ahead and check out the benchmark. Okay, we got the final test results. We're looking at a minimum of 42.6 FPS, an average of 74.8, and a maximum of 97.6. So let's go ahead and put all the results on a sheet of paper and see what we came up with. So how about we go ahead and run through some of the numbers real quick. Again, we tested Rainbow Six Siege, Far Cry 5, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided for the benchmarks because they have built-in benchmark tools and then, you know, reduces the amount of variables that could happen by just benchmarking it separately. So with the hard drive, we actually had a minimum of 77.2, an average of 227, and a max of 295 when it comes to the frame rates on the hard drive with Rainbow Six Siege. Now, when you see the minimums on the SSD, which are actually 83.1, it's actually a slight increase over the hard drive. Now, this is something we noticed with two of the benchmarks and could be a factor. Normally, when you see minimums that are lower, it's normally like the stuttering of things loading into place or something else in the system is not keeping up. And considering the only factor we changed was the hard drive, it's most likely the fact that the hard drive struggled to load in textures and it caused like a slight stutter here and there when the benchmark started and therefore you lose some performance. And some of the rest of the numbers with the SSD is an average of 224 and a max of 285. So Far Cry 5 was almost the exact same across the board. Hard drive, we had 82 minimum, we had 103 average, and a max of 124. With the SSD, on the other hand, we had 83 minimum, we had 104 average and 126 maximum. So really close, like within two FPS of every single benchmark there. So there's really no difference that's worth noting. Like in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, where we had a minimum with the hard drive of 42.6, an average of 78.4 and a max of 97.6, compared to a minimum with the SSD of 58, an average of 74 and a max of 96.2, it does seem to show just how the benchmark is ran. It doesn't load up all the textures right away. So therefore it's actually testing the hard drive and SSD a little bit. And there is an impact on performance because of that. Uh, but over Overall, with this testing, does a hard drive make a big difference in terms of FPS? No, but is it important in terms of things like load times, just overall reliability of your system? Because if you get an older hard drive, especially in a budget system, it's bad. It's bad. We had an older hard drive that we were using for this testing and we were getting a lot of stability issues. Literally, we had to change the hard drive in the middle of testing, but that's something you just have to consider. If you go with newer hard drives, it might not be that big of an issue, but do keep that in mind if you are with a maybe an older system and you're considering upgrading to an SSD to get better performance in games. So so, and like Matt was saying about game loading times, so not only can you get into your games quicker, also if you need to do like a reset, especially if let's say you're in the middle of a really good competitive game and then your computer crashes, really common thing that happens. You want to be able to get back into Windows and back in the game like ASAP because usually they have like a two to five minute time period that you're allowed to rejoin. But with the hard drive, that's not happening. I can just say that from experience with a hard drive, you're probably going to be waiting anywhere from one to five minutes to get back into Windows typically. With an SSD, it's usually an average of about 20 seconds to boot into Windows. It's a really big noticeable difference. Application time loading is a lot quicker. And like Matt said, overall reliability, SSDs actually have shock factors to them. They can actually withstand a certain amount of movement and a certain amount of basically like getting punched or dropped or something like that hard drive that's almost instant death. 
And for most average PC gamers out there, you know this information already. When you're building your system, you know SSD greater than hard drive. But if you're a new builder out there, it's highly recommended that you spend money on a large single SSD or get something called an SSD boot drive where you get like a 240 gig SSD, even a 500 gig would be a good option and use that for your Windows install and a couple of games that you wanna launch really fast and then just get a hard drive for the other games that you wanna play because that's normally the most cost effective way of doing it. But honestly, SSDs are really affordable so the first option could work as well. So as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs> Just rip it up. <laughs>